Packard Motor Car Company and its distributors and dealers everywhere present the Packard Hour. With Johnny Green, his piano and his orchestra. That super talent scout, Charles Butterworth, the world famous Abbey Players, that sensational song group, the Farsom Quartet, and starring. Fred Astaire. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you. Baby, I don't want you to croon soft and mellow. Let me warn you in advance. Sing me a swing song and let me dance. Oh, baby, I don't want any moon bright and yellow. You can have your sweet romance. Sing me a swing song and let me dance. Mr. Trombone, play some corn. I ain't caring what notes. Mr. Trumpet, grab a horn. Brother, give me hot notes. Oh, baby, I don't want any tune on a cello. Give the rhythm men a chance. Sing me a swing song and let me dance. Mr. Trombone, play some corn. I ain't caring what notes. Mr. Trumpet, grab a horn. Brother, give me hot notes. Oh, baby, I don't want any tune on a cello. Give the rhythm men a chance. Thank you, thank you very much. Well, um, here we go again. Um, uh, a few years ago, uh, all an orchestra leader had to do was stand in front of a, mu a music stand, wave a baton, smile, and bow. Today he has to be an all-around athlete. Johnny Green, for instance, even in a fairly quiet number, starts out conducting his orchestra from a platform, then does a double nip-up to the piano for a few bars, and a swan dive to the celeste, and a sprint back to the platform to finish the number. Here's a chance for Johnny to get a slight workout as the orchestra plays as a small hotel from that grand show, On Your Toes. <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you very much. And this is Johnny Green, ladies and gentlemen, bringing together two important voices. First, the voice of Packard. Announcing four great new Packards at four new low prices. And second, the voice of automobile owners everywhere asking, why is the new 1937 Packard 12 the finest motor car that money can buy? Because this luxurious new Packard steps so far ahead mechanically... Yesterday, it was the amateurs that swept the country. Today, it is the community singing idea. Now, ever on the alert to bring you the newest and the finest manner, we present as your leader, that great inspiring commander of song, Pepper C. Butterworth. Thank you, Mr. Carpenter. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I can't tell you how mighty, mighty proud I am to see such a group of beaming faces out there in the audience tonight. That's what the country needs. More happiness, more joy. Smile, smile, smile. That's the ticket. He who smiles, he who laughs, he who I hold like a date. <laughs> this uh, get-together song fest is for one and for all. You listeners out there sitting by your fireplaces, as well as your friends in our vast audience, are invited to sing. If you don't know the words, then hum. You know. <laughs> be happy, be gay. Or as that famous poet, what you call it, says, Oh, it takes a heap of living in a house to make it home. A heap of sun and chatter, and you sometimes have to roam. Oh, it takes a heap of living, etc. <laughs> in other words, let's go along, sing a song, and let a smile be your umbrella, as the fellow says. <laughs> now, what... Plenty of pep and zip. Let's all be boys again. Except the girls, of course. <laughs> Pardon my little joke. My first song, I've chosen everybody's sweetheart, everybody's favorite, rather, the old folks at home. Now, plenty of ginger. Come on, don't forget the pep. Are you ready, uh, Mr. The fellow with the orchestra there? <laughs> Just, just a moment, folks. I don't think our little family was quite ready. <laughs> Once more now as one big happy family. And don't forget the old pep and a little of the old zip. Already everybody's favorite, old folks at home. Red sails in the sunset. Red hold on, folks. Hold on. Hold... There seems to be a little geographical error here. <laughs> A member of our little family, the one sitting in the first row there, seems to have forgotten the words. In fact, I believe you were singing the wrong tune. Weren't you, laddie boy? <laughs> I'm singing Red Sails in the Sunset. You heard it. <laughs> yes, but, uh, see, oddly enough, we, we happen to be singing everybody's favorite, Old Folks at Home. I like Red Sails in the Sunset. <laughs> then would you mind uh, singing it at home? I wouldn't mind, only my wife doesn't like red sails in the sunset. <laughs> yes, I, I can see your point there, but it, it just doesn't fit in with our plans. You see, there are hundreds of people here besides you, and they all like old folks at home. They can be wrong. <laughs> Young man, uh, we don't seem to be getting anywhere. That's okay, I got nothing else to do. <laughs> hey, aren't you getting a trifle impertinent? Those big words don't scare me. We're still not getting anywhere. Now, please join with the rest of our little family as we sing everybody's favorite, the old folks at home. I don't like the old folks at home. <laughs> hey, it might interest you to know that I don't like red sails in the sunset. That just shows how stubborn you can be. <laughs> why, uh, why, excuse me, uh, don't go away now, or, or if you do go away, don't come back. Fred. Yes, Charlie? I wonder if you could help me a little. I'm having a little trouble getting my little get-together society together. <laughs> I'm sorry, Charlie, but this is your idea, you know. <clears throat> I know, but that fellow down here, he wasn't my idea. <laughs> You're doing fine. Keep up the good work. Just uh, tell him to follow the bouncing ball. Yes, I know, but this bum down here... I, pardon me, son. I mean, this fellow, he won't sing. I'm sorry, Charlie. That's your problem. Well, Fred, never let it be said that Pepper C. Butterworth wasn't master of the situation. So in order to keep our happy little family together, we won't sing old folks at home. Instead, we'll all join in and sing everybody's favorite, Red Sails in the Sunset. 
All ready. Plenty of pep. Don't forget the old zip. Red sails in the sunset. Here we go as one. Good man, this has gone far enough. What's the trouble? No trouble. Let's keep going. Far, far away. Here, here, here. Let's be one big happy family. Come on now. Let's all sing Red Sails in the Sunset. No, I want to sing old folks at home. Hey, would you come over here with me for just a moment, sonny boy? Yeah, certainly. Pardon me, ladies and gentlemen. Just a moment. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, in memory of our late colleague, we will now sing Goodbye Forever. I think we got him that time. I'm curious to know which of all the Jerome Kern songs from Swing Time is your favorite. Well, Ken, uh, it's difficult for me to pick a favorite after being so closely associated with the numbers. But I think I like the one called Never Gonna Dance as well as any. Perhaps on account of its particular dramatic significance in the picture. The lyrics by Dorothy Fields are really swell and will explain what I mean. Johnny, will you please play it? <laughs> Without a penny, the wolf was the sweet. He left me my feet and oh, I put them down on anything but the La Belle. La perfectly swell romance. Never gonna dance, never gonna dance. Only gonna love, never gonna dance. Have I a heart that acts like a heart? Or is it a crazy drum? Some weeks ago on the RKO lot, I became acquainted with that very fam famous group of actors, the Abbey Players of Dublin. They had come from Ireland to make the screen version of that Irish classic, The Plow and the Stars. Naturally, they were the first people I thought of when the question of unusual guests for the packet hour came up. Their name on the stage has been synonymous with the best in drama for a generation. Yates, Duffy, Dunsany, and a score of the Ireland's greatest playwrights have seen their works performed for the first time by these players. Tonight, we are happy to present for the first time on the air two of the Abbey players, Barry Fitzgerald and P.J. Kelly, and a former member of that group, Miss Una O'Connor. They will do a one-act Irish farce by Sean O'Casey called The End of the Beginning. <laughs> The scene opens in the kitchen of the home of Lizzie and Barry Barrow in a small Irish farming community. As the curtain rises, it is just 7 o'clock in the evening. Lizzie Barrow is busy among her kitchen pots and pans as her bald, middle-aged husband comes in from the adjoining bedroom, busily covering his cheeks with the lather of shaving soap. Hey, Lizzie. This shaving water's dead cold, woman. Did you hear me? This shaving water's dead cold. Well, come on in and heat it, then. You've too much to do, I suppose. Hey, listen. I could do all that has to be done here three times over, and when all is finished, I'd be sighing for something more to do. Ah, go one hour with that, Sally Beryl. If you had half of what I have to do here, at the end of the evening, you'd be picked up dead out of the debris. I would? You would? Sure. Certainly. If I'd only have to do. Or less. I'd be picked out of the debris. Right out of the middle of it. Dead. Dead as a mackerel. Well, I'm always challenging you to change places for a few hours, but you won't do it. For two pins, I'd clear out this minute and go down to the meadow myself and mow it and leave you to make what you can of the housework. Well, buzz off, then buzz oh, off. I will, then. Go on, then. <laughs> I'll show you and all your sex how the work of a house should be done quietly, speedily, without a whisper of fuss in its doing. Ha. Oh, surely. Yes, and mind you, this will only be the beginning of things. Oh, God grant that it won't be the end. And that when I do come back, I'll at least find the four walls standing. Goodbye, and a back of my hand to you. Hail and farewell to you. <laughs> More than that, you indeed. Well, let us see her folly out. Oh, these women, these women. Well, now that she's safely gone, why shouldn't I take this occasion to do my calisthenic exercises? I've got to keep myself fit. I'll do the housework later. 
And here sits the gramophone begging to be played. and see if you can remember how to walk at the concert. Well, what about the housework? There's plenty of time for that later. This is more important. Ready? Come on. Walk. Uh, Kate, keep off me toes. We don't go down the same way, do we? Of course not. Try to watch where you're going. Now you go to the left. I remember distinctly. I said it was going to the right. Don't be such an egotist. You go to the left. No, I go to Look the right. to the left. I don't think I, you know which is your right. Which is your right. go to the right. Which is your right. right. Jerry Barrell and his nearsighted friend Seamus O'Lancy rehearse for the village concert, heedless of the fact that time is swiftly passing. Uh, shall we try our duet over again once ah, more? The village shock is striking. Seven, eight, nine. What's nine o'clock? I'll have to get going. If the housework isn't done when Lizzie comes back, then sweet goodbye to my status in this house. Out of me way now. now. You're not going to expedite matters by running around in a hurry. I suppose listening to you trying to pluck questionable sounds out of a mandolin was a way of expediting matters. So you pioneered me into doing it yourself. You know, I can't carry the conversation into a debate. Either lend me a hand in a quiet, orderly way, or go home. Of course I'll lend you a hand. First off, I'll save an hour by turning the clock back, then to the dustbin. Now, I give the key a few turns and set the hands while you get out of the dishes. All right, then. All right. Hurry up, then. <coughs> oh, look at that. You've broken it. I didn't touch you it. You didn't touch it. And after looking at you, twisting and tearing its bowels out like a drunken mechanic. I'm going to... Uh, I'm doing my best. Here, come over. Come over here and wipe while I wash. Now, look, look careful with that teapot. Now, don't be afraid, Daddy. I won't do, uh, let anything drop. Oh, no. Look what you're after, June. Why, it's only a tiny teapot. Here, yeah, come here. Come here, Seamus. Sit down there in the corner. Do nothing. Say nothing. If I could, I'd put a safety curtain around you. And for heaven's sake, touch nothing while I run out and give the spuds the pieces. Oh, find the door there. Oh! Oh, my nose. Oh, I, I bang my nose. Hey, hey, get me something cold, man, to shove down the back of my neck and stop the bleed. Well, a little block of ice would come in handy. Ice? Do you expect me to keep lying here till the winter comes? <laughs> Listen, Seamus, I'm losing a lot of blood. Wait, there's a big key above the mantelpiece in the bedroom. Run in and get a quick man. All right, I'm oh, going. No, I'm going. It's as dark as pitch in here. There's no light switch. Uh, maybe I can find way in the dark. Oh, my nose. Oh, I, I bang my nose. Hey, hey, get me something cold, man, to shove down the back of my neck and stop the bleed. Well, a little block of ice would come in handy. Ice? Oh, you expect me to keep lying here till the winter comes? <laughs> Listen, Seamus, I'm losing a lot of blood. Wait, there's a big key above the mantelpiece in the bedroom. Run in and get a quick man. All right, I'm oh, gone. I'm gone. It's as dark as pitch in here. There's no light switch. Uh, maybe I can find my way in the dark. Ah, uh, now. Uh, now, what have you done? Oh, nothing much. The washstand fell over. Here, come out. Come out of that. Come out of that. All right, I'm coming. I'm coming. Oh, holy moles of a cow. I forgot the cow. Here. Go outside and see the cows all right behind me, tie the house. All right, I'm going, but it's I who am doing the front of the work. You stop muttering and tie up that cow. Oh, here she is, cropping the grass. Uh, can't we uh, tie her up to something? Actually, uh, there's nothing to tie her to, man. Well, what about putting her up down the chimney and tying her to something in the room? Now you're beginning to use your brains at last, Seamus, me boy. There's a rope out there. Yes, I see it. Well, sling them on right around her neck and let the other down to the chimney. I'll go to the fireplace and catch the rope when it comes down. Right, Jeff. 
I won't be a second. Hey, careful climbing up there on that roof. Oh, careful. Hello. Hello. Are you there below there, Daddy? Right, oh. Well, here comes the rope. Okay, I've got it. All right. I'll be right down. Right now. Well, now, now we can tie this end of the rope to the big chair and put it over here at the far end of the room. Then, if a cow moves, we'll see the chair moving. Ah, there's a clever arrangement, Daddy. Now, now we can get going on the housework and have everything ship shape before the Mrs. Todd is back. Turn on the light so that we can see what we're about. Haven't have my eyes gone blind entirely? No light comes when I turn the switch. It must be the blasted motor. Here, get a new one. Uh, oh, the chair, the chair, the chair. The chair's moving. The cow's uh, pulling. Grab it quick. Catch hold of it before it disappears up the chimney. Mind, look out. Mind, mind those pots. Mind those pots. Here, here, here. Come here, come here. I'll sit in the chair and hold it. Good, good. Uh, she stopped moving now. Oh, there'll be a nice panorama of ruin here when Lizzie comes back. I, I can't see a blessed thing now. I've dropped my spectacles again. Well, nice, and I can find them. Oh, a nice predicament I'm in now. Look out, look out, look out. There goes the chair again. The cow's dragging me. Poor man, poor, poor already up the chimney. Aye, aye, pulling, I'm poor. pulling. So there's a strength of treaty in that cow. Here, I'm going right up the chimney. Hold on, hold on, man, I'll I, up the I, chimney. I, I can't, she's too strong for me. I'll be on the roof in a minute. I can't do me housework up there. Hey, grab me leg. I hey. can't reach him. Oh, Daddy, Daddy, help, murder. What's happening here to follow the cow? Oh, the cow, Daddy, it's hot. It's choking itself to death. Lizzie, be careful with that rope. Lizzie, don't touch the rope. Daddy's halfway up the chimney. <laughs> I'm, I'm dying. I'm, I'm dead. Oh, for the love of my, what's happened to you at all? Are you all right, man? I've broken all my bones. What in the name of heaven has been going on here? Well, now, now you see the result of having your own way, Lizzie. Why didn't you hold on to the rope when you took it off the cow so that I wouldn't come down with a bump? Ah, sure, how was I to know you were up in the chimney, you big galoot? How were you to know? Good heavens, woman, can you do nothing right? Next, I have Jerome Kearns and Dorothy Field's sarcastic love song, A Fine Romance, also from my picture, Swing Time. One might, one might call it the swan song of a young man who is getting nowhere fast. Thank you, John. A fine romance with no kisses. A fine romance, my friend. This is, we should be like a couple of hot tomatoes. Just as hard to land as the Ile de France. I haven't got a chance. This is a fine
than the seals in the Arctic Ocean. At least they flap their fins to express emotion. A fine romance with no clinches. A fine romance with no pinches. You never give the old kids I send a glance. No, you like cactus plants. maker of America's finest motor cars is to each one of us some piece of popular music of the past carries its own particular memories we remember a romance a canoe on a lake a happy summer a thrilling dance an evening in the moonlight <laughs> I venture to say that not one person in our radio audience will fail to remember tenderly the song of a bygone era that Johnny Green plays for us tonight, Poor Butterfly. eavesdropping on a scene that brings us on ground familiar to all average young men at one time in their lives. Doesn't that music make you feel sentimental? No. Just a little romantic? What do you mean, romance? 
Oh, you know, a moonlit terrace, the strains of soft music in the background, and a couple of lovely... Uh, a couple of lovely what? A couple of girls, you know, two. One for you and one for me. Uh, or did I mention me before? <laughs> Well, what girls, for instance? Well, I didn't think you'd pin me down. I, I've got a cousin named Agatha, though. She's an awfully nice girl. I don't care if she were the most beautiful girl in the world. Oh, but she isn't. I don't doubt that. But even if she were, if she had lovely chestnut hair, if she had laughing hazel eyes that made you want to dance, no, not even if she were the most attractive thing you've ever seen. How about if she had some money? No. No, not interested. You go out and be romantic by yourself. I'm off women for life. From now on, no more dates, no more dances, no more women for me. Uh, pardon me, sir. What is it? A special delivery letter for you, sir. I thought it might be important. Well, I'll take it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, sir. You you take my advice, my boy, and keep away from girls. I don't have much trouble. You don't know how lucky you are. I've never met a girl yet who wouldn't chuck you for those big, blonde, six-foot athletes. I, I, uh... uh Charlie. Charlie. Take it easy, old man. What's the trouble? I've, I've got a letter from her. It's all right again. It's, it's all fixed up. Well, would you mind letting go of my necktie for a minute and tell me what it's all about? Uh, I'll say I won't. I'll shout it from the housetops. I've a letter from the most wonderful girl in the world. I just got an invitation through the mail. Your presence for breakfast this evening. Come on, the top half my time tails. Nothing now could take the wind out of my tail. Because I'm invited to step out. Evening top hat, white tie and tail go on. Putting on my top hat, tying up my white tie, brushing off my tail. I'm building up my shirt front, putting in the shirt and dust, polishing my nails. I'm felting out my dear to breathe an atmosphere that simply reeks with class. And I trust that you'll excuse my dust when I step on the gas. Be there, putting down my top hat, mustering up my white tie, dancing in my tail. Putting down the top hat, 
Marching up a white tie, dancing in the face. Putting down the top hat, marching up a white tie. As we ring down the curtain on another Packard Hour, Johnny Green is giving you a preview of one of the featured musical numbers of next week's show, We Saw the Sea from Follow the Fleet. And besides Fred Astaire, still undaunted in his search for talent, Charlie Butterworth, the Gleason family, Jimmy Lucille and Russell, the Pixelated Sisters, and one of the most thrilling singing groups you've ever heard. from the picture of the same name. The poem used on this program was by Edgar Guest. This is Ken Carpenter saying goodbye until next Tuesday. Till then, ask the man who owns one. This program was originated in the Hollywood studios and was broadcast over the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company. KFI Los Angeles. Swing time premiere Hollywood Pantages tonight. See swing time, win a Packers. Contest details, Hollywood Pantages, RKO Hill Street Theaters, or any Packard dealer. Listen for the old Observer Sports broadcast tomorrow night, 9.30.